What's up guys and gals, Danny Lightning back. We are doing a review on the Fifine K668 Dynamic XLR USB podcast microphone. So this is a XLR and a USB microphone. And so far I'm really liking what I'm hearing through my headphones. This sounds very clear and very clean. Fine Fine did send me this microphone for free to review, but I'm giving you my honest opinion. Today we're trying to find out, is this worth the 60 or $70? Is this thing a good value for the money? Well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna go ahead and run a couple of different tests on the microphone, see how it performs, maybe compare it to some other microphones, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on exactly what I think of this thing. There will be some links in the video's description and the pinned comment where you can get this microphone or a bunch of other stuff. If you want to become a channel member or make a donation or buy something off the link, it supports this channel and helps it get more equipment to review and help other people. So thank you and let's get back to the video. Now I've got one of Five Fine's older USB microphones here and I got a lot of compliments on how good this thing sounded, but there is one reason I stopped using this. This one had a problem with the plosives where when you say your P's, the microphone pops and you hear a big boom. And that's kind of annoying to listen to. And this microphone had a really big problem with that. Even if I had it like way over here where it shouldn't have been doing it, it was. And I don't like using a pop filter on camera, so I actually stopped using this microphone for that reason. Now this microphone, if I go Peter Piper pick some pizza and peaches in a pear tree, I don't know what that means, but... It's not popping. It doesn't have a pulse of problem. I mean, you're always going to get some pops in a dynamic microphone. I mean, it's two inches, three inches in front of your face. You're going to get some pops, but they're not like, they're, they're normal. Like, they, they did a good job with this one on the pulses. So let's go ahead and test the foam windscreen. So Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. So it's definitely a lot worse without the windscreen. So I would say this little windscreen does a good job. But overall, it's not bad on the pulses. And just in case you were wondering, this is how the microphone sounds without a windscreen on it. And this is how it sounds with the windscreen on it. Next, we're going to test for... Oh my goodness, I messed up. Next, we are going to test for the sibilance. So we want to see how the S sounds sound. So do the S sounds sound harsh? Do the S sounds sound harsh? Selly sells seashells. Selly sells seashells. Selly sells seashells. Selly sells seashells. And from what I can tell in my headphones, this microphone is not very sibilant, which is good. Let me play that back. All right, so the pulses aren't bad. The sibilance isn't bad. So far, it's a good sounding microphone. So let's see how it picks up my keyboard. If I'm sitting there gaming or typing on the keyboard, we're going to start clacking on this bad boy and see if we hear much keyboard noise. So there I am clacking on my semi-loud mechanical keyboard. Can you guys hear that? I don't know if you can or not, but that is the keyboard test right about there. All right, I'll stop. So the next thing we're going to do is tap on the desk and the microphone and see if this microphone is picking up a bunch of resonance. So I'm going to drop my mouse on the desk. And if you hear a little bit of like banging, that's normal. You just don't want to hear any ringing coming back through the microphone. Let's go and tap on the desk. I'm not really hearing any major resonating frequencies coming back through the boom arm into the mic. So let's tap on the actual boom arm itself. So I am getting some resonating frequencies, but nothing bad. So that's not really an issue. Just don't bump your boom arm and you'll be fine. Let's tap on the microphone. It's a little worse when you tap on the mic, but that's not horrible. So I would say the resonance is somewhat acceptable on this one. There's a little bit there. Just don't bump the stuff and you'll be fine. This is nowhere near as bad as something like the new Shure MV7 Plus or the old MV7s. The resonance on those things are terrible. All right, so now we're going to test this thing for off-axis noise rejection. So we're going to spin the microphone around and see how much of my voice it picks up. So we are going to go ahead and spin it. Check one, two. Check one, two. We are slowly spinning this bad boy right here. And this microphone definitely gets a little bit of handling noise when you touch it, but we are almost all the way around. And that's pretty good. Let's bring it back around this way. And that's how it picks up the sound of my voice and the sound of the room as we spin the microphone. So just in case you're wondering, there's that test right there. 
Now we are going to test the proximity effect, so let's get right up on top of this microphone and see how she sounds. She sounds a little bit hollow, but still not too bad. I don't think I would want to talk into this microphone this close. So let's back off. We are now about two fingers away from the microphone. We are now about three fingers away from the microphone. We are now about four fingers away from the microphone, which is pretty much the standard distance. Now we're going to go ahead and back up to about a hang ten away from the microphone. And now we are going way back here. Whoa! Man, I'm looking fat. Oh, gross. Camera really does add 10 pounds. Gosh dang it. All right, so now we're running this bad boy on USB. I've got my headphones, not my headphones, my headphones plugged right into the back of it for zero latency monitoring. And I can hear any sounds that play over my computer as well. On the back, there's a gain knob, and there's also a volume knob for your headphones, which is really cool. There is a mute button on top, so let's go test the mute button. And you only get the mute button when you're on USB, so check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Am I muting? Am I muting? Am I muting? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I bet you can't see. And yeah, that's the mute button right there, and it seems to work really, 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 really well. So yeah. There's a test of the mute button on USB, and this is how she sounds on USB. So I feel like this microphone sounds very nice on XLR and USB. See, something like this is basically a starter microphone. It's not going to give you 100% pro quality sound, but it is going to get you close. You can spend 60 or 70 bucks on something like this, plug it into your computer with a USB cable, and then you don't have to go out and spend 50 bucks on an XLR cable and $200 on an in -ear interface. So instead of out there spending 350, 400 bucks, you're spending 70 bucks to get going. But I seriously feel that I could take this microphone, plug it into my computer with a USB cable, record videos on my professional gaming channels with this microphone, and I don't think anybody would complain to tell you the truth. All right, so let's go ahead and compare this to a couple of other microphones. So this is the way the Fifine K668 sounds on USB. This is the way it sounds on USB. And in just a second, we're going to let you hear two other USB microphones. And then we'll switch it back to XLR for a couple of other microphone tests. So this is the K668 on USB. We're talking right in the front of it. And this is the way it sounds. All right, now we are talking into the Fifine K658D on USB, and this is the way it sounds. I definitely hear a lot more sibilance on this, and when I go, Peter Piper picked a pack of peppers, Peter Piper picked a pack of peppers, it just seems to be way worse on the plosives than the other things. So this was a really good sounding USB microphone, but I would say the new one, the K668, just kind of blows this one away in a lot of different ways. I am talking back into the front of the Fifine K668, and this is on USB. We are still on USB, and this is the way it sounds, so let's go ahead and switch over to the next microphone. All right, so now I'm talking right into the front of the Miano PD200X on USB. This has always been one of my favorite budget microphones for quite a long time now, and I actually think this new Fifine, the Fine Fine that we're testing today, is going to give this thing a run for its money. So... This is the Miato PD200X on USB, and this is the way it sounds. And let's go ahead and switch these bad boys back over to XLR and do a couple microphone comparisons on XLR. All right, so now we are back on XLR, and this is the Fifine K668 dynamic broadcast microphone. So we are talking right into the front of this bad boy. So let's go ahead and switch to another microphone and see how she sounds compared to the Fifine, fine, 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 fine K668. Now we are speaking into the front of the Fine Fine K669D. Is that the right numbers? Let me find out. Yes, and this is a $35 XLR only dynamic microphone, and this is the way it sounds. If you've already got a good audio interface and you like the way this microphone sounds, it's probably worth 35 bucks. I mean, that is dirt cheap right there for a microphone. It doesn't sound bad. I do think that the, uh, I kind of like the sound of the other one we are just reviewing a little bit better, but let's, let's move on to the next thing and let you hear how that sounds. So this was the 669D by Fifine. Yet again, we are talking into the front of the Fine Fine K668 
dynamic broadcast microphone and this is the way it sounds so let's go ahead and move on over to the next microphone so you can hear how that one sounds now we are talking in the front of the miano pd 200x on xlr and this is exactly how the way it sounds and this is how the way it sounds or whatever i just said right there so this is the miano pd 200x and let's go ahead and switch let's go ahead and switch let's go ahead and switch Yet again, we are back on the Fifine K668 dynamic broadcast microphone, and this is the way it sounds. So yeah, let's move back over to the next old microphone. Let's go do it to it. Now we are talking right into the front of the Shure SM7B, and the microphone we're reviewing today should give you somewhat of a similar sound to this. At least that's kind of what they're going for with that dynamic broadcast sound. So this is the Shure SM7B, and this is the way it sounds, and let's move back over to the next thing. And then one last time, we are back on the Fifine K668 dynamic broadcast microphone, and I still think this thing sounds really good. We are on XLR, and let's move over to the next thing. Now we're going to compare this to Fifine's little condenser microphone. This is the K669C. The C is condenser, the D is for dynamic. There's a 669D and a 669C. C is condenser, D is dynamic, and this is the way the little guy sounds. All right, so let's go on with my final thoughts on this microphone. So this is actually a very good value for the money. I mean, you can sometimes find this on sale for 50, 60, 70 bucks on Amazon. There will be a link in the, the pinned comment and the video's description as to where you can get this thing. If you buy something off the links, that does help support the channel. If you join a channel membership or anything like that, that also helps support the channel. This is a really good microphone for the money. It sounds really nice and clean. It, it's really clear. It doesn't have a pulse of problem. It doesn't seem to be very sibilant. It just overall sounds nice for the money. Like I said, you can go out and you can spend two, 300 bucks on a microphone. You can go out and spend 200 bucks on an interface, 30 or 50 bucks on an XLR cable. Next thing you know, you got $250 to $400 wrapped in an audio setup to where you can go buy this for $70. It's not going to sound as good as the $400 audio setup, but it's going to be about that close. It's going to get you very, very close to professional quality sound for only $60 or $70. Bucks. So when you look at it that way, it is an excellent value for the money. It really does sound nice for what it is. I mean... I judge things by what they cost. Does it do well for what you're paying for it? And yeah, I mean, you can go out and spend $99 on a handheld microphone. That's going to sound better than this. But you also got to go out and buy a $200 interface and a XLR cable. So this is great for someone who wants to get started on a budget. This is more than good enough for your blogs, your podcasts, your YouTube videos, this microphone will be great. I mean, I wouldn't use this as a voice actor, but for anything else, this is going to be a top-notch, really good starter microphone for anybody. So yes, this is a very good microphone. I do recommend it for somebody who's on a budget. I think it's really good. There's a couple of budget options out there that are really good these days, and this is nice. I really like the way this one sounds on my voice. Everybody has a different voice, and everybody's room is different, but... I'm a big fan of this one, actually. I, I really do like it. I think it sounds great. So, yeah, I would give this thing about an 8 out of 10, maybe a 9 out of 10 for the sound quality that you're getting for the money. All right, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. I think it's going to wrap this up. If you drop down the video's description, you'll see my Discord server, my YouTube channels, some affiliate links, and all kinds of good stuff. And I'll put some of that in the video's description or the pinned comment as well. I'm messing this whole thing up. I can't talk today, but thank you guys so much for watching. Lightning out, have a great day, and we will catch you next time. See ya.